What is going on with my glasses? Oh, yeah. You are way too far over there. I get Do you know the muffin <laughs> lamb? I'm glad I got that in your head. Yes. So, yes, Miss Nancy. Yes, Miss Nancy. <laughs> okay. Look it. <laughs> oh, we should get that tape for our next. Or we'll just oh. stand there and like, wait, here we go. You got to do this. Are you going to pull? Yeah. <laughs> we have the filter on us. I think so. Yeah, yeah we definitely Skill looks do. Pretty, <laughs> pretty fabulous there. I'll tell you what. Okay. Hi, Amber. Hi. Are we working? I think so. That said, there were two. Um, we want to do full screen, right? Or do we not? No, we can definitely do full screen. I want to, I need to get that camo thing up just in case, actually. It's our COVID wall. Right. Okay, should we let him in? What time is it? 55, five minutes. Sure. We can get everybody set. Right. Well, maybe not. Maybe we should just wait. I don't know. I'm all nervous now. Three three minutes more. All right. We have to remember not to like horses. All right. Shall we? Mm -hmm. oh, there's a bunch of people. That's Mitchell. Oh. Mitchell. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Michelle. How are you guys? We are just lovely. I know. Hi, everybody else. Hi, Jennifer. You look cute. I love your glasses. Hi, oh. hi Cindy. Hi, Andrea. Glad you guys could make it today. How do I do the, like, the Brady Bunch style? Oh, yeah. Does anybody know how to do view everybody on screen at once? It says, right? Right? Oh, right? Well, get right here. Gallery. Okay. Good work. Andrea, we can't see you or Cindy or Jennifer. They don't have, they, I told them they don't have to be. Oh, oh okay. Okay. I don't <laughs> want to offend anyone. <laughs> oh, there's one. Hi. Can you guys hear us okay? Yeah. Did, are they muted? We got this new fancy microphone that we're using today. Oh, wow. Very <laughs> professional. <laughs> they have the option to mute when they uh, aren't on so it's not interfering you should think i'd know this by now we're figuring it out yeah cindy is cindy here yeah i'm here oh okay we got yours 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 was the most complicated you should be you win oh, no. <laughs> is jane where's everybody's names why aren't their names on their pictures fix that I was going to send in a question, but I totally spaced it. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. You can always throw it out. If we can't answer it, we oh, can't answer oh, it's it. It's just about the Little Smith torch. I just, I can't stand it, stand it and want to hurl it. <laughs> uh, well, I keep going back to my subtly, which I love, but mm. it's just, I can never get the heat right. I just <laughs> have to have, yeah, the mixture of oxygen and you using propane with it. I, yes. Propane oxygen. Pro propane oxygen. You want that really hard blue flame, so you want to keep adding oxygen. Yeah, yeah. Just, I keep doing it. I keep doing it bushy, and it's just doesn't yeah, like me. it doesn't like me. Well, add more oxygen to it really slowly <laughs> until you get a really nice, sharp, tight flame on it. I like a big flame to work with. I'm I'm used to my acetylene air with the big tip on it, and I yeah. do everything <laughs> with this big tip. Yeah, I do too. I just I love it. It's, you know, the, the Smith Little Torch is fabulous for a lot of people for doing tiny findings or if you want to get in quick and get out fast, you know, um, I, I'd say that's probably one of the most beneficial things for it, like a stone in place repair.
I think we're going to start talking about Cindy's um, question because it's the most complicated. Um, so she wanted, she has two questions essentially. I watched your video on hinge making that demonstrated hinges, but these were flat pieces of metal back to back. Uh, she wants hinging for poison rings and lockets and, and soldering them. Um, one of the things is that back to back thing. Most lockets and uh, poison rings use that same concept. Hinges and hinge baits caches by Charles Luton Brain. And in here, he's got, this is the classic um, one for lockets right here. You make a straight hinge and you file off the corners on the outer two pieces. And that creates that round shape. You follow the shape of the locket that you're making, like on this. I'm going to cut in front of you. Okay. If you make it, try to make a curved hinge, it's going to lock on you. So the only, the only other way that I know to do it. Here's yeah, this too. Yeah. Okay. So see these two domed halves here. What you would do is you would file a flat spot on here. And then you come in with like a, a joint file or um, what it's a chenier file. The same thing where the, the filing edges okay. are on a rounded side and you make your groove in there and drop the, the hinging down inside of the locket. Does that make sense, Cindy? Yes. Okay, good. Um, okay, so the my big question was that little tiny area of solder, Nancy, at one time you had used some like white out to like right. make sure that the solder didn't go. So right. I'm just assuming we can still use that same principle, even though it's this tiny little tiny thing. It's you just know? more of a pain in the tush. Okay. It's because I got concept you used, um, you can make yellow ochre up to. I've done the, I did do some filing down, like when you set the three little knuckles on the, like the locket that I did once. Um, and it worked great. It was great, okay. but yeah. Yeah, you filed these. Yeah, down. I had. I just it, had a b a b of a time getting the solder not to go everywhere. I tried the paste. I tried just a little piece of the hard. I think that you a really fine tip paintbrush. Don't put any flux anywhere near the hinge you don't want to solder. That if you okay, can. great, okay, and and use either the white out or the 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 yellow ochre. That yellow ochre comes in really handy for pattern material too. Would you recommend, like if I set the three knuckles and then take one away, you know what I mean? Like just start with the, put the three knuckles in, take one away, solder the first two and then solder the the oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That, okay. Awesome. I, yeah. I watched my video again today because I did that nine years ago. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. Is I, I yeah. think I soldered the two outer knuckles first. Some people also you can you can also take a strip of tubing and mark where your center knuckle is going to be. Saw down and actually after you've soldered that whole strip of tubing down, you just cut out your center with a saw. So there's that, oh, and then you file to okay. clean it up. And then you just cool. measure that gap with your dividers or your calipers and cut a piece of tubing to that side and solder it to the other side. Sweet. That sounds so, way this better. This book is really good. You really, honestly, I, I recommend it. And yeah. also, um, okay. this is Vanna White Jr. over here. <laughs> Uh, Paul Paul Revere, <laughs> Alan Revere has <laughs> professional jewelry making. Book, oh yeah, yeah, and he's got a whole thing on how oh. to make a, a, a multi phase locket in here with a curved and in. photos. Okay, with, cool. And well, he does the same thing where he files the outer edges of that hinge down. So okay, those are two great books that I think, and they're the only ones I've seen any kind of locket information in.
Okay, so Cindy had another question. She, Amber and I both looked at this and went, oh my God. <laughs> 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 tricky so what she wants to do is solder half jump rings on a one millimeter thick piece of silver i'm assuming cindy yeah yeah but i'll so, take any suggestions because i threw that thing across the room a couple well, times <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly a cutting jump rings in half depending on how big they are could be make you insane um yeah but you're gonna have to get that strip as flat as possible. You, I, I don't, soldering it on a curve really kind of maybe could make you insane. Yeah, okay. Um, so we were thinking like if you have, uh, uh, this is a really skunky one, but a magnesia block, which is really I, soft. I do. Um, make yourself some staples to, to put over the ends or in the middle to make sure that that metal is uber flat okay and then mark out with your dividers you know where your beginning and end of your centers of your jump ring your your half jump rings are going to be you know what i mean uh, yeah mark the centers okay uh with your dividers and then move down your uh strip with the divide with the dividers marking as you go honestly i would do one at a time i would never stack them up you know okay and one of the misconceptions and i've had this myself because i was taught this way is that you have to heat the whole piece completely um the truth of the matter is is i would heat this thing in that like if i'm soldering a half jump ring here i would just heat that area i would okay put my torch anywhere else all you, right you may also benefit from using where's the tripod i tested that the other day i didn't believe her and it works. <laughs> so another one is if you have not this screen, this is a bad screen. <laughs> Actually, okay. this works for many things, but not for what you need. But if you could get a nice brand new flat screen and put that up here, you could wire your um your piece of back piece of metal through the little holes to pull it tight and then heat from underneath. Oh, which got I, you. And only okay. in the spot you're trying to heat. You don't that jump ring so small compared to the other mass of the metal <clears throat> that yeah. you probably wouldn't even have to come up on top once. Uh, oh, awesome! Okay, Thank you, Nancy. I also Thanks. thought because it will be annealed, and if you give yourself a little wiggle room on the ends, you could just use a mandrel and form it after by hand. By hand. Oh, okay. All it, right. Once you solder these on, your metal's going to be soft and it should be easier for you to hand bend. If you have to, you know, if you could have a plastic mallet. Okay. And carefully, because I'm, what I'm concerned with is that if you the pull. Jump rings. Yeah, that, depending yeah. on how, how robust your jump rings are, um, you know, if they're like 10 gauge, you're probably not going to have as much chance of crushing them, but if they're 18 or something you could definitely smash them but you might be able to curl those edges or use pliers okay yeah, yeah if there's a little bit on the edges or maybe i'm just thinking throw some toothpicks in there or like little pins or something if they're tiny when you form it i don't know oh to keep the jump rings from ben oh, that, you know i don't know use wire that's a great oh, idea, I would oh wire right, right yeah <laughs> so and then there's these bail making pliers which are okay. great for curling ends they make oh. them round too oh awesome okay lovers <laughs> love, love, i love lover. those things <laughs> love the lovers so weird <laughs> so do you feel answered i do feel absolutely answered thanks girls very good, much good 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 Michelle has, a, a, what the heck did you photograph this on, by the way? We get great detail. Check, check this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's the faux fur. I love that. <laughs> I knew it's it. It's a blanket. <laughs> it's thought, a blanket. It's, oh, wait, it's my blanket. <laughs> oh, it's cute. When I first saw it, I thought you photographed on your dog. <laughs> It's pink. <laughs> this is my divorce blanket. <laughs> well, I, I knew what it was. I love oh a divorce blanket. <laughs> I needed a divorce shotgun for my first husband. <laughs> well, that's 
that's next. That's my birthday present. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so, so Michelle has essentially what she's got here is a pendant and it's got a brass center uh, bird. And then she's got some hammer texturing and she also has um, powdered uh, silver, you know, what's another word for powder? Silver dust. Dust, dust. silver dust. And then she's also got a wall around it, like a bezel almost that's on set. And then a frame, maybe. Fr that's a good word. <laughs> you need We're to have a together. dictionary hanging out with you. And then um, then she has a little bail here with a jump ring on it. So her question was basically what were the steps, right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. So Amber and I talked about this a lot uh yesterday we didn't write it down though i know what we, okay. we said though i, I, I can I remember know. that stuff I, I can't remember words <laughs> so i would definitely saw out my back plate right then i would sweat solder that bird on with even if you have i don't know if you have it or eutectic solder a real high melting if you don't use hard okay. solder on that and then you're going to want to do your texturing of your metal because you don't you can't do that before because you, you don't unless you're going to scribe out where the bird's going to be your hammer texture it looks like you use a punch or something on this what is, yeah what, that that was just to fill in the spaces where i did the messy dust okay so, so. you may not do well let's, that was an afterthought let's pretend yeah. let's pretend yeah. that you that, that, uh, that one was proof of concept so if, if you do want to do texturing like that, the only way you can do it without putting the bird on is to scribe around where you want the bird and then be very careful about not punching underneath it. Because you, if, you know, the lumpier it is, the less your applique is going to solder on there. Yeah. You know, you want as flat as humanly possible there. Um, and then I would go ahead and put my silver uh, dust on <clears throat> after I did the bird. So you're going to have to use, I would use yellow ochre or white out on the bird so that okay. in case you do slob some on there, some of the dust. Um, the other thing you could do too, you could also use our laser printer, laser cutter Chimera and cut out a, a vinyl sticky to put on mm. top of it when you sprinkle. So you don't, then you peel it off. You know what I mean? Does that right. make sense? So anyway, then you'll want to put, you put flux, all where you want the dust to be um, put I would tripod this and heat from underneath if you can mm -hmm. and heat it until you know you get your your melt on there at that point um, I wouldn't put my frame on until almost it's this last right before the last step so I would do the frame after I put the silver dust on and then I would put your bail on and I can't see an easier way to do it order wise. So for okay. me, it's sweat, dust, frame, bail. So I would need to file off a space. Wait, where? On the dust. What, right? What, what, wait. <laughs> what? Love it when I stump Nancy. This well, is good. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so well, on okay. here, what are you talking about? Okay, so putting here, this on after you've applied the dust. If I the the frame, the outside part. Oh right. right. If I put that on after, I'm gonna have to like file it, file the back plate. You're 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 putting flux down, right. and flux should be holding it. You could actually rub your finger around the edge and clean it up before you fuse it. That's take true. a toothpick, go around the edge, remove it. I mean, there are ways where you could avoid doing that. If not, like you said, you could get your file out and run this it around. file. Will file. Okay. It shouldn't be that much, Michelle. But if you did like masking tape. Yeah, I mean, it's the same same concept yeah. as the sticky vinyl on top, but I'm, you know. Or, or I could use ochre yeah. to paint a border too. Yeah, you could, but yeah, yeah, totally. But I, I like the toothpick idea myself is take it off before you even fuse it and then you don't have to worry okay. about it. Okay. And I would definitely heat from behind. Nancy? Yes, he. Um, is the, the solder that you're talking about, is it the kind of solder that you can use when you're doing ceramic and silver together? 
but I, I just had this. I found I'm this stumped on that. I don't work well, when you ceramic. when you said when you said the IT solder for the oh well that for you for uh, 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 enameling yeah when you you were talking in the very beginning about soldering you could you either use hard or what was the other or it which are both close to full silver oh got you okay solders. so the hard has i can't remember the percentage mm, yeah like it, 80 it's okay I, I thought you meant that you could use this kind of solder that you use with enameling you can that's oh. that's what i use for enameling is the eutectic or the it yeah yeah that's that's what i have yeah. okay I, okay because i have a little really, sheet of that because I, I dabble in enamel but oh, not okay. so much so i have a whole sheet of that laying around and i thought oh great now i can't use it on anything else but now no, I you I can, can certainly right? use it okay. in jewelry making. and the reason Great. i said such a high melting solder is because michelle is going to be soldering sweat so oh that's another thing we want to talk about when you're when you're sweat soldering that bird on after that's done and then what she's going to do is she's going to bring that back plate up to like red hot to melt to fuse the, the dust there's a potential for your center element to float off the solder and come out of position. So this is um, made by my friend, uh, Chris Anderson from Lion Punch Forge. Some kind of hold down would help to keep it from moving. A weighted something. You can make these out of binding wire too, but this is also a cool tool because you can change out the ends and have different shapes on, on the end. But it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, it's fun. So do, do you feel okay about that, Michelle? Yeah, I think it makes sense. I I did a second one and had better luck. Um, I, well, I thickened the, the, the middle bird cause it was really thin. I had, was using like 24 gauge. Um, well, why would that be a problem? Was it buckling? I melted it. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> Swear to God, heat from behind. Yeah. You don't even have, like, heat. if you were using like a 24 gauge, you wouldn't even have to heat the top of that piece. I would just stay okay. underneath it. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. And then with the dust, what, heat from behind for the dust too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's an underutilized technique. And I think it's really important uh, to, to de use it more because it's, especially if you're soldering anything tiny on the front side, which dust is incredibly tiny. Yeah. And plus it'll keep it from blowing off. Right. Yeah. Oh, which was not... why I got like those naked spots. The only thing the you have to time. watch, I know that at Chimera a couple of times when mm -hmm. I did a class, we didn't have mm -hmm. enough tripods. So we did this and straddled the metal across. That can be disastrous, especially if you're bringing sag. something up to fusing temperature, you're going to sag or it can actually snap in the middle, okay. especially Argentium silver, which is a beast when it comes to sagging. Okay. Well, I have, I have a tripod. Excellent. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question on that too. Um, so I have, I have like a buttload of those, um, fire bricks just because uh -huh. I have them on the base of my table. So if I use one of those, you know, the heavy, which I use generally those kiln grates. Uh -huh. but, so if I do that between the two, um, fire bricks, that yeah. should, I should get enough, be able to get under there and get enough heat. Yeah. We, yeah. we definitely use the, the, uh, fire bricks at chimera to make my make tripods the 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 only thing that you, you're oh it's heavy um actually amber likes to solder on these and you know like when i do jump rings and stuff it's a little large surface the the deal with the with the tripod is you know it, they come with this heavy duty steel grate uh screen on them and the problem with that is that the steel is such a it just sucks the heat away from the piece so I always get order separately the thin, like almost like window screen, but heavier, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, so I don't, I'm trying to, my kiln grade is pretty heavy. Uh, let me look at it. I, I find that I usually have to heat up, heat the, the grade up first. Does <laughs> yours look like this? Um, no, let me, I'll get mine. Hold on. Okay. I this will be right pretty now. thin metal this would be all right and well it's like the heavy one so you're okay with that yeah i do everything on it and i just do it warm water and i brush it off until it's clean but um oh, you got to do that. everything i make a hole in the pumice and i heat under 
by going from the side. Oh, okay. you have it in pumice too, like in a, a nailing pan? Yeah. Well, I have a cake pan that I put a lazy Susan under and uh -huh. yeah. Um, so Nancy, sorry to butt in. No. We can we can get a thinner screen. Yes. Because I have that monster too, and it's super hard for me because it does suck the heat out of me. Yeah, especially if you're using a smaller torch. Yeah, the bigger torch tips help a lot. Do we do we bring the and if you're using butane, this is like the size I use. Yeah, I use that one too. <laughs> you get good at not melting stuff. Yes. After yeah. you melt a bunch of stuff. But um, honestly, a bigger tip would help with that. But but there is one that's sold for jewelers that are the one we had just showed with the big hole in it. Is that okay. Really? This, this one's like double or triple thick of, of a window screen. Yeah. Know? Is that a hole in the middle or is that? Yeah, it burned out over the years. <laughs> but it's great for some things. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, when I was uh, researching torch fired enamel, <laughs> the guy yeah mine does the hole in the middle yeah you can definitely do enamel oh, yeah, yeah so rio grande maybe as far as jeweler supplies go to Probably. get that screen yeah either them or auto fry oh. jane there you are hi jane <laughs> So Jane is wanting to solder silver balls on the back of a pendant before stone setting. And she wants to know what kind of flux and solder to use when adding fine silver spheres, spheres to sterling. And then we'll talk about the bricks, charcoal, honeycomb, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, let me show you her, her example of what she would like to replicate. Let's see how this pendant has a very uh, large. Oh, I love that one. What do you call it? Um, what are the balls called? Granules. Re retich re no, we're not retich granules. I mean, what the articulation? No, oh, um, oh, uh, can't remember. Granulation. Granulation. This is like big ball granulate, big sphere <laughs> granulation. And then her other side is going to be pattern. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So one side's going to have pattern. One side's going to have the spheres, right? Okay. Yep. So obviously yep. you're not going to put your stone setting on until after you sphere. Otherwise you'll end up. Yeah. I'm not going to do a stone. I just like it just the way it is without no, a stone. Oh, I, oh, okay. I, I just I don't know how to get the granules on there. Okay. So there's two, there's three, four ways, right? Something like that. So in, in uh, granulation, they use something called hide glue. It's made from skin of animals or something. It's kind of gross, <laughs> especially when you say it like that. <laughs> and you mix it with water. Um, usually it's fused. Those spheres look big enough that you could actually probably put little pieces of solder on the back of them and solder it on if you didn't want to go full fusing. But are you buying commercially made spheres or are you making your own? Um, well, here's what I, I actually bought a bunch of fine silver casting grain. Okay. And I found enough in there that looked pretty perfect. Cause, so they're round. They're not, they don't have flat spots on them. Uh, no, but that's what I was going to ask. Do I need to flatten it? Well, okay. So usually what, what I do is I make jump rings that are the, when I melt the jump ring, it's the size of the sphere I want. So sometimes it's trial and error. So I might start with a two millimeter or three millimeter and, or cut them in half. Um, so you, what, what the making it, your spheres out of jump rings does is it guarantees that they're consistently sized. And when you're melting them on, where's our block? Do you have a charcoal block? Because you melt it yes. on a charcoal block and it creates a flat back when it's melted on a block, unless you drill a hole in it. So you've already got your flat back by making your own, which is why I, you could just melt those. Oh, okay. Yeah. You could remelt the balls. On, yeah. char on yeah. charcoal but they might not be the same size Like usually if you, I make balls the same size, I will cut it like pretty much exactly the same size wire and then ball it up, which you can easily do. Yeah, or do the jump ring thing. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, jump ring. I would remount those spheres instead of trying to file a flat spot on all of them. You'll go insane. It, it would be crazy. <laughs> you, okay. You you could use something like double sided oh, yeah. tape though. Yeah. To do it. I forgot we brought that out for a reason. If you want it organic, like in knots. What do you mean? Round. Well, you stick it in. This is there's some really good uh, tapes out. That one. That's a double stick craft tape that's really sticky and you can stick the spheres into it and drag it along sandpaper but it's it's a little you know you lose a couple once in a while and then there's this stuff okay. i mean it, that's if you don't want to remelt them and make new balls this is called joe's uh sticky stuff but right. you can peel it off and roll it up it's like a kind of this, this kind of thing so would you use fine silver or sterling? Because I'm going to patina. I would use argentium. But if you were going to oh, use okay. um, one or the other, the fine silver, uh, um, if you makes better spheres yeah. by far. But argentium makes the best. I know because I never get, I never get good spheres out of sterling. No, um, the best spheres are okay. argentium, hands down. Also, one of the best fusers is argentium, um, and then next, fine silver. Um, so I would I don't wouldn't even bother with sterling as your as your granular elements on there. Um, so anyway, so we talked about sticking it on with high glue. A much more simple solution is to just use flux, a lot of it, and preheat it to the tacky phase before it completely glasses. And you can set your spheres down into the sticky um, flux at that point. Are you talking about liquid liquid flux? You could use whatever kind you like, but this is our new favorite. Uh, this is Rhonda, I think it's Rhonda Coriel's purple flux. So and she does granulation, I think. Yeah. I took a class with her at Revere like 19 years ago. Yeah, she's uh this is an awesome flux. It, when we heated it up, the metal had like almost zero oxidation on it after we were soldering done soldering so so if your if your spheres are large enough you know let's say they're like that big you and you have flat backs you could apply solder onto the back but honestly i think i would fuse those because a pain in the butt to put apply sweat you know basically you'd be sweat soldering the spheres to it and if you're putting uh okay what 50 spheres on the back of that thing i think you would be much better off heating it from behind and then fusing I would, this is another okay. behind, underneath heating system okay i'm glad and, you said that about the underneath practice get a couple of you know use your some scrap and check and try it till you get good at, at it yeah sure Um, when I've tried Perfect. to do, um, do that um, with the fusing, what I've ended up having problems with is that my back plate um, sort of, because it's argentium, it, uh, it's sort of, yeah. Yeah. So you have to be fully supported. By well, e even with that, it just seems like, you know, it's just all sort of sunk down and I've had I've had better uh, results when I've um, I've used solder because it doesn't have to get quite as hot because it's not right. into that fusing heat. Right, because the fusing, you're almost completely melting down. Yeah. yeah. Um, you might benefit from trying that on just a piece of charcoal. Okay. Uh, in that case, with argentium, it's because of its slumpability. Yeah. I think it has to be fully supported. But for the for the balls, the spheres, they can be argentium with a sterling silver back, you know. So okay. she could, that's the, what that was my other argentium. question. Oh, sorry. Sorry, right, what, Jenny? I was said, what's the trick with the argentium? Because I bought it years ago and it's just been stuck in a drawer because I blow it up literally. It like explodes on me. That's really <laughs> bizarre. I have never heard of that before. Um <laughs> The only difference in it between it and sterling silver is I think it's 0.3% of germanium.
the, the usually, when it was quenched i'm all reading about it what no it's when i was it had it on the um i can't remember if i had it on probably like a silk pad or something i'm reading this it says um hazard identification inhalation unusual fire and explosion hazard i know it does explode <laughs> oh my god it does <laughs> no one believes me <laughs> well it's on when you go into rio grande they have the sds the safety day yeah. piece. it says it there so you can yeah, maybe i just got an explodable batch you know right one thing i know is that you can't move it while it's hot yeah for sure because it will it will crack if yeah, if you try to move it off of the, your block or anything while it's still you know yeah and I, I did have the hold down on it. I did have the spider hold down on it. So I'm wondering when I was shifting it, uh, um, that that maybe you probably got it so hot with the hold down and all the weight on that. Are you using the big spider hold down or the little one? Yeah, the big one. I only have. Yeah, a that's a lot of weight on a on really super uber hot metal. It that could be partly what happened there. Okay, that probably explains it. I would try it again under normal situations. Maybe okay. not heating it up to you know lava <laughs> yeah i was using my butane torch then as i was being lazy and didn't want to go get um acetylene i know i use this all the time when i'm too I, lazy <laughs> i love that i, I know it's so it, it's a great torch it it is it just really is you can fabricate anything with that <laughs> yeah the only thing i don't like is that you cannot recycle the, the canisters which i don't understand but I burned the hell out of my hand. So did you once. Oh I yeah. Remember. Well, that was um, that was an enameling torch yeah. enameling. I um I was in the heat of the moment, and the thing slipped the tip, and uh, I tried to put it adjust it while I was soldering. And well, I mean, I turned it off and then did it, but it was still so, hot. Oh no! I gotta go. I'm gonna I'm try gonna to listen. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go audio. So All miss right. you. Bye, Michelle. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Good to we see won't everybody. Talk about you. I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Michelle's a Chimera member oh. and one of our favorite people there. She's an amazing <laughs> woman. Jennifer asked what a poison ring is. Uh, poison ring is a ring that you can hide poison in. <laughs> or back in the <laughs> Where's our little pictures? Wait, you can. Uh, what do we do with that? They open up, they have a, a hidden compartment. Look, this is a poison ring, and you can see that there's a hinge right here. It's very difficult to hide these little things. And this thing opens up, you put poison in, then you lock it down, and then you slip your poison into your enemy's drink. What, when what you're at the era? Feast. Maybe Roman times? I don't know. Yeah, the Romans, thing. Greeks were into poisoning each other. Yeah. And Nancy, and I did make a poison ring that you just um, like pop the top off. I made uh -huh. it so that it there was um it, it, you were able to grab it. What do you, oh, I textured like the outside of the lid so you could kind of shimmy it off. Oh, okay. Because the I like I said that the hinge thing made me cry, so I thought yeah. I would do something. <laughs> you, you know, you might. <laughs> that's fun. Let me show you this little container I made. This could be another interesting concept for a poison ring. Yeah. So this is just a compression a fit. That's exactly what I did. Uh, yeah. Um, so Jane, do you feel, do you have more questions? Yes, you definitely answered my question. Okay. So does anybody have any questions that they would like answered or need more information on a particular sure. topic? I'd like to go back to the jump ring scenario. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're my nemesis right now um, i kind of stay away from them so i hate making earrings um i stick to rings so okay so when you're when you're using the um fire brick you said you use them for your jump rings mm -hmm. um are you just heating off to the side of the jump ring are you i'm kind of just heating the whole thing up but you have to be i call it quick draw mcgraw you know mm -hmm. you just gotta flick up as soon as it it goes, you know, and um, I usually have a little thing that I do where I put the solder underneath it. So it's kind of, this is the solder and then this is the ring. And as soon as it collapses down, it's usually flowed well. 
And I put that solder right at the seam too. Right. So like continuous, I, like for chain and stuff. Yes. Okay. And so then I just do, um, I do that three method or something where I make a bunch of rings mm -hmm. and then I do the open ring and then I connect the jump rings to it and then just solder the one. And I just continually do that. And I usually use the third arm when I use, when, um, with cross locking tweezers, when I do the, um, oh, soldering the links, the together. soldering, the, the, the main ones. Yeah. And if it's real bad, I have to, like, if they're tiny, I have to be, you know, really careful, but the finer tip and like the, like, like kind of the Smith torch is a good one or something, nothing okay. with like a super you brought it up. Smith torch. So, the the blue light i mean the yeah. the, the um oxidizing flame. gonna poke your eye out flame yeah. and you know Hot don't get too close with it because then you will melt them so you have to kind of hold back a little bit with the, with that okay. torch you with the, yeah you, you get the flow. like a seven or a six like on that or um smaller, smaller god i always use the biggest one i just i don't ever look at the numbers i don't know i just like leave it in there um yeah don't use the rosebud. Don't use the tiny one. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, not the I most do, tiny. I do have a rosebud. <laughs> That's Rosebud funny. will make your, make you spears. Rosebud will yeah. melt your face off. It makes spears. So this is, this is the best way that I've ever found that what Amber just said, where the solder goes under the seam. And is that from like a three millimeter and up every single, like. Yeah. Like uh, either that or, you know, what you do is you get argentium wire and you may, and you fuse them. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not that it's once you get the hang of it and I do it with uh, ring shanks too, and I stagger them. So what one, 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 one. Yeah, I do that too, but I just use my acetylene. Yeah, I should. I use the smaller tip on this, um, the oxyacetylene as well. But this is, she's talking to, she's going to acetylene air, right? Well, I have a little Smith and an acetylene air. Yeah, but when you're saying, when you say you're using your acetylene, you're talking about your acetylene air. Yeah, yeah. atmospheric air, that's what I meant. It doesn't yeah. get as hot as the Smith torch, so you can actually hit the metal with the torch. My AA. Well, it just, it oxidizes so fast. It's like killing me. I know, that's what I, that's why I'm really interested because the finer stuff, it just, it oxidizes. But you've got um, pickle, Yeah. Right? I don't know. I'm just like I said, it's a mid midlife crisis, jump ring crisis. <laughs> I swear, you probably just have a block, and then you just that one tiny trick. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, and then you're gonna get it. I, I, I'm gonna do it. Don't yeah. move around. Hit that seam hard and fast, and get in and out. Especially if you're doing copper, brass, or bronze, because you've got so much. Um, hi, Denise. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, you know, you get so much oxidation. I see people heating up copper pieces and it's like, what are you doing? Stop heating the damn thing up. You're creating massive amounts of oxidation so that your flux yeah. no longer works and then nothing's going to flow because it's a dirt ball. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it's get in the area where you want that solder to flow, heat that thing up and, and get it done fast. So I are think- Are you using rolled out um, wire, solder wire or- uh, sheet sheet lately i used to use rolled out solder wire that's all i used but now i was like why don't you just use the damn sheet <laughs> my I technique i i like that there's some height though so i use the wire because i that's how i know unflatten yeah that's how i know once it sinks it means okay. that the solder flowed up into it that's i'm gonna try that because yeah, yeah why yeah. not i i don't like what solder wire unrolled because i think the you end up with too much solder but that's my thing i'm i'm a, a minimalist on when it comes to solder oh i'm biscuits uh, and gravy when it comes to solder it's like <laughs> everybody the has their <laughs> own thing that they do you know it, it's it's all as long as you're not spending your whole life cleaning up solder <laughs> andrea had a question okay did we answer your question jenny Perfectly. Thank you. No problem. Ooh, that's a sad thing. She says she's had issues with melting gold back plates when making bezel setting. It happens when I'm flowing solder, forgetting the bezel wall solder to the back plate. It seems like once the solder melts, the bezel wall or back plate also starts melting. 
I'm using 26, 24 gauge for bezel and back plate. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Um, are you, you're, what, what gauge uh, gold are you using? What carat gold are you using? For most stuff, I'm, I'm doing 14 carat right now. Okay, are you using a 12 carat solder or 10 carat? Are you using 14 for all of it? No, I'm using a 14 carat. No, the, the metal's 14 yeah. carat. What about your solder? Right. Same. Mm -hmm. Drop your carrot. Go down. Go down to if a ten. Okay. Um, because there, okay. there, there is the issue. With, you know, with the temp melting temperatures are really close. You're also working really with really mm -hmm. thin stuff. So, um, I, I think one of the things. Are you doing a general all over heating thing, and then you get the flow, and then you walk it around, or are you spot? Yeah, I mean. It? That's how I do it. That's how I do it for silver and it works so well. Yeah. Um, but it just doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to translate when I, when I start working in gold. Yeah. The gold doesn't transfer heat like silver does. I mean, it's noticeably different. So gold is more, you focus on the spot where you want the solder to flow period. And then, you know, you, I wouldn't warm anything up. I would just go right in at that where the solder is and then soon as it runs you move is it gold or gold filled okay yeah gold do gold. you uh use easy solder or what solder are you using gold sometimes is. i'll use easy solder but um but for like secondary connections not for um that you know that primary yeah. connection i usually try to use hard yeah i wouldn't use easy at all i never use easy I don't know. I I know you like we we disagree on this one. I don't. I use hard solder pretty much. That's it. I use medium mostly. I, just, I use so, hard and but, medium. I never use easy either. We all have our thing. I just thought maybe it would flow easier. <laughs> but honestly, if you, you use a lower melting, and I would tr definitely go down a carrot on your gold solder. Okay. And try that and see how. Okay. That yeah. And then I'll hard. definitely give that a shot. And my favorite term terminology in soldering is flick out, which is <laughs> you don't take your torch out this way, you flick out. That sounds funny. I know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we just so um hey. we mm. have other stuff we want to talk about, ladies. I do have a back question on the necklace that Jane was trying to make with the spears. And you had said something about fusing, Nancy. I don't, I've never done that, I don't think. So can you just quick explain it again? Yeah, uh, fusing, what you're, you're doing is you're hoping your metals come to the, the flow point, not the flow point, but the, the melting point at the same time so that they molecularly join together. Okay. Um, most of the time you, you tend to fuse with like metals, but it's also possible like, sterling and argentium are, are basically the similar composition you know so they're going to reach temp about the same level but they're slightly different metals um and we were talking about you know certain metals when they melt leave like uh, sterling silver leaves uh divots and pits sometimes so we try to stay away from that when we fuse usually you'll, you'll use fine silver or argentium for that. And what you do is you're trying to bring both sides up to the same temperature it, at liquid. I think it's called liquidus is the point when it just starts to become slightly liquid and doesn't flatten out yet. You know, so think of a sphere that's kind of just melting into the bottom plate, but still retaining its top shape. Okay. Uh, what generally happens when people first learn how to do this is this happens. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. adios. So it, I, I like to do, you know, practice with um, my scrap silver and then mm -hmm. scraps of wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually, what you're doing is you're saw, you're, you're uh, fusing something smaller on top of a larger back plate. So generally you're gonna to wanna to heat from the backside okay. on that. So use your tripod screen combination on that. Um, although like we were talking, um, Peggy, uh, when Peggy said she, with working with Argentium, it's very slumpy. So 
we were talking about sticking with a charcoal block if you're using an argentium backplate. I wonder if that honeycomb would be. Yeah. So it might leave slumps. Yeah, this is a, a honeycomb board um, and they all end up broken like this. <laughs> yeah, some kind of rule in the universe that you're going to drop it. <laughs> and they invented those. I, I frankly, look at all those holes for solder and granules right. to fall into. <laughs> or other little things so people you, swear by them i don't know I, I i used them for a while and i i just got so tired of losing my solder down the holes yeah uh, that i quit exactly. but this is really nice because the heat because it, it's open the heat can flow back and forth in here so this i have not tried this for fusing but i just had the idea that this might actually be a good fuser because okay. one side's kind of lumpy, but the other side's very flat and smooth. I'm going to try that. Okay. Today. So, yeah. Let us know so, what you find. <laughs> Please, Jenny. So, so in, regard, in regard to that heart shaped necklace, so you're going to put all the spheres on at one time and fuse that. Is that correct? Uh, that's you're what I would do. Trying, okay. The, like you said, Nancy, I'm going to practice, 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 but there's going to come a time where I can eyeball when everything's starting to happen, right? Yes, you start so to I can, okay. shimmer. Your metal's gonna get really red. Okay. Really red. Um, and we're talking about, you've got like a fraction of a second. Once that metal starts to shimmer where they join, you're right. out, flick out. Okay, okay. And you're gonna have to really pay it to one at a time. Don't, don't try to do the whole thing, but keep your eyes on the pieces around it because sometimes something behind it will heat up more than the piece in front of it. So you oh. really need to be very aware of what's happening all around that torch tip at all times. Okay. All right. I would definitely start with small pieces. Yeah, for couple sure. Of, couple of beads, you know. Okay. And then can I just throw one more question that I had out? Well, I wanted to say one more thing. Sure. <laughs> just <laughs> on that. You, I don't know if you've ever used clear fire. Were you the one who's done enameling? Yeah. Yeah, I have used clear fire. Use clear. You can use clear fire too to hold your um, spheres in place. Undiluted. Oh, awesome. Yeah, okay. I do 50 50. 50 50. Yeah. 50, yeah. Uh, don't use tap water. Use. Uh, yeah, real good water. Distilled. Okay. Distilled water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what was your other question? Okay. So, so, the other question is um, <laughs> I have never had like a real good torch. I've always used like the, the jumbo guy and then the little jumbo guy. Yeah. So I'm finally, <laughs> I'm finally at a place where I can buy a torch. Oh, I'm, I'm scared though about, you know, stupid things like it blowing up and stuff like that. So yeah, what is a good, what is a good beginner's torch? And I'd like to get tips that are varied, like for very small jobs and then so like some bigger jobs. Okay, you are, you're not in okay. an apartment, are you, or a condo? No. You, you really need to, also, I would check with your insurance company. Um, <laughs> honestly, and like we have uh, wildfires here and I have an acetylene tank in my studio and okay. uh, I could kill a fireman, you know, or a firewoman if, they, if the fire was here with my tank. So that's something to be very aware of is, you know, how, what safety wise, What's the legal, the B tank is the legal size to have in your house, in the studio? I don't know. I, you have to look in your area. It depends. Okay. It depends. So check, check it. You maybe talk to the fire department or something. Um, propane is probably going to be your best bet. A propane okay. oxygen. Awesome. Setup because the propane can be in like the barbecue propane thing. And yeah. You fill them anywhere. And, you know, they're probably the safer gas propane sinks right acetylene rises i think propane sinks so if you're ever yeah. worried about a leak uh, you walk in and kick before you go in the room fully, <laughs> and that supposedly kicks up the stench to know if you've got a leak but just every time you go you in the room start vent, kicking. You know, well start. you know in, in auto fry they did they do have a little torch that they offer um but I'm is, sorry, it a, is, is it a is it a uh Oh, it's a small propane? Yeah, it's a small pro but, propane tank, but they've got the hand, like the hand one with it with the little tips. And is that something I could? Uh, I'd have to, why don't, why don't we continue this at an email? I'll, I'll take a look okay, at great. those later for you and see what I think. Sure. 
Um, the thing is, the oxygen tanks have to be huge because you use a lot more oxygen than you do propane. Okay. Yeah. I I, I don't want to bogart everybody's time. So yeah, I'll I'll I'd love to hear more. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Just show me. Send me. You know, in an email, a couple of the links you're looking at, and um, yeah, I'll tell you. And it all of them come with different. I mean, all besides these these you know cooking butanes come okay. with different size tips um okay with the little torch i've used two tips the in the last 25 years the road nice. which is the big one and the biggest little one that they have because they're so tiny <laughs> drives me up a wall okay. but i that's me too um i use a i have a goss, goss yeah the goss torch and it's three tip that i use constantly i i can only change the tip for bigger when i'm doing um making um you know ingots but i use a three number three goss and the goss is a nice setup it's but it's settling air so i i honestly think if i had my druthers and i was going to start all over again i would buy propane oxygen cleaner okay. great for doing torch enameling um, okay. Yeah, it's just much and safer, cleaner and safer. Settling's a okay. scary, scary BS. It's more expensive. Yeah. Settling's more expensive. <laughs> yeah, and you have to, you know, you're not even in California, you're not even supposed to put it in your car. It, the only way you're supposed to transport is in an open area, like a back of a pickup truck. Uh, it's so dangerous. It's the accidents occur with these plumber guys. And they throw these tanks, these uh, settling tanks in the back of their car, leave them in the car overnight. They didn't have the valve shut properly. They hit their car, unlock, oh and the thing blows up. Right. Yeah, so, I have oh, wow. to blow back. I have to blow back all the stuff on all of my tanks. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's all what all of those I, I'm things. just. And whenever I, you it, turn them on, make sure you're over to the side. Like when you yeah, that's what I mean, girls. I, I'm too scared of that stuff. And so, never anyways. light it with a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing is you can't ever go past 15 PSI or the tank could blow up. I've used it for years. I've never had issues with it, but I'm no, really but run a, it. run a maker space and see how many idiots are in there trying I to know. kill themselves. I mean, yeah. we've gone in there and the thing's been cranked all the way to the top. And the only reason it didn't blow up is we were out of gas. It's oh because my gosh. when you turn the, the tank off and release yeah. the pressure, they actually yeah. tighten the pressure. So when you turn the tank back on, you're like, ah. so I know you always have to loosen all the knobs and stuff or tighten the gas tank, but loosen the other knobs. Sorry, so. I've got a, what do they call it? When they Rogue or yeah. walkabout. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's talk more stuff. Um, what do you guys like? For soldering on, who's favorite? Who likes Nancy's charcoal? Question. Anybody like charcoal to solder on? One, that's my favorite. I use charcoal. And do we know all about binding wire and quenching? Yeah. No. No. Who's the no? Cindy. 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 It's hard to tell because I can't read your that's lips. Highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so there's two different kinds of charcoal. Basically, there's there's hard and soft charcoal. The soft charcoal, you can stick pins in, steel pins and hold things in place and stuff like that. But the problem with it is it, it breaks apart like icebergs, you know, these chunks come off it. So what we do is we wrap steel wire, Bind, binding wire, 16 oh, gauge, okay. 18 gauge steel wire around it. And then you, you knot it. And then you make these bends in it with pliers where you just go, Trink! You take the pliers and twist. And what you want is a tight band around this to keep it from falling apart. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Binding wire, you just wrap it around like twist it three times. together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But quenching your block is probably the best way to keep your block lasting forever or as long as possible. Just spray it with water. I have a. Okay, that I do not know. <laughs> So quench the, the charcoal. All right. Yeah, I have a spray bottle with just regular water in it. And every single time I solder, I quench it. Because if you don't think about it, charcoal briquettes, you leave them burning, they can turn, they turn to ash, right? So if you quench this, you're not going to end up with these big holes in your charcoal. My block, the round one I have is probably six years old. 
and it looks almost Whoa. brand new. Wow, I'm so, amazed. So you know, oh, is it so even for oh. even for high density too? Wait, what did you high density. I use I usually almost always use hard the hard the high density hard okay. charcoal. This one, look how big it is. Oh, <laughs> I just get so excited. Where did you get that again? Look, compare. I have this a big round. Like, I have a big round one. I love yeah, it. This is bigger <laughs> than the round one. Really? I have, yeah, I have the round one too. And you know, it's like when you're using um, like your pretty baby Chris's tool. Try try doing that on the little charcoal block. It doesn't fit. So I I found this uh, auto fry in Oakland, California. Uh, but it came damaged. It's got a big clunk and it broke in half. So I just put the binding a double layer of binding wire around it, and it's been good for a year now. So yeah, can you know you can't even tell this is hardly being used. There's no divots. There's no burnouts in it. And uh, I've had this Brilliant. almost a year. So that quenching really works. I, I made um, uh, a, a p I took a piece of aluminum flashing, uh -huh. that, um, made sort of like a little tray for it to sit in, so that um, oh, that's cool. I've seen yeah. down on something that was you know protecting the other side of it too. But I can still flip it back and forth if I need to. Yeah, absolutely. So Nancy, I had a question on, um, so I saw this little trick the other day on Insta, I don't remember who, <laughs> but uh -huh. um, where they were melting ingot and they were just using their tweezers to form it into, um, did you see that too? But they said that their instructor had showed them a long time ago and they just, they get it up to, they, they have their silver blob that they melted and um, they just use their tweezers. They have long tweezers to just form it and to, to be ready for wire, basically, to roll wire. They did it like clay, kind of, like smushed it's it. It's like they just smushed it, like, oh, that's crazy. Angle now. Ooh, yeah, it was really cool. It's like they smushed it, then flipped it over a little bit, and then smushed it again, ready for wire. It was brilliant. Yeah, I wonder if it would crack. That's what I was wondering. Thing of the um but whatever she showed, you call it when you a move progression it. video of her pull you know of it and it looked pretty springy and stout so um uh, denise where are you i am in my studio oh my, my god studio. what a great studio <laughs> Thank you. Um, my studio probably surpasses my um, smithing uh, <laughs> talents, but I do a lot of um, wow. enameling. You do a lot of enameling. We're so far away, I thought it was thread initially, but that's all enamel, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I finally decided that I had to start setting. Is that um, lighting? Oh my gosh. You had to start uh, what? Setting some of my enamels. So I do a lot of I make my little cabochons. Uh, oh yeah, see. I do that too. I love yeah. that. Have you so, ever tried powder coating? I have not. Oh my God, it's scary. <laughs> it's so much easier than enameling and it doesn't chip and you don't have to worry about bending it. It's just, uh, and there's 10 billion colors and you can dip it and put it in a toaster oven and Oh my God. You, it's a plastic. It's like a plastic. It's what you put on paint that you put on cars. Cars. And, and one, one day we're going to get to that video I'm doing. The mm -hmm. Oh, I want to see it. I want to see too. it. <laughs> oh, what do you got? It's my mold that I use. Oh um, yeah. So I can make it skinnier or bigger, but that's nice. Um, Where'd I, you get that? I, Germany, this person that sells it. It's amazing. But I can't, I can't figure out how to use it correctly. So you can make this wider. This goes out. There's this well, holds it together bottom piece. Oh. Um, so I can make it bigger this way yeah. or almost like sheet, small sheet, but um, maybe, but yeah. Oh, that's pretty. What nice. happens when you use it? So I don't, I mean, it's super sturdy. I'm just not, I don't know if I'm not getting it hot enough or if my settling is 
I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm scared something's going to happen. I just don't do well when I'm pouring ingot. Is something happening or are you just afraid something's happening? There's a difference. (laughs) Well, I can't gauge to, so I tried doing, um, 14 karat, um, ingot and I made it so fat. So I guess when I'm pouring it, um, out of the crucible, like do, Oh, these flat, do I need to just like drag it or do I, cause it has a stop right here where you can, um, it concentrates on that. And this yeah. is a little area you have to gauge. So I, I do use a small crucible. I also have an electric melt, but that would be too overkill to even try to get it. Yeah. Heat. Yeah. I agree with you on that. You're, uh, you're going to have to figure out the volume capacity of what size you're doing so, and then figure out the weight for that volume. Uh, on that, but I would st- I would definitely heat that thing up in the kiln. I think that could be really one of the okay. It should flow on its own. Is it all it, just heavy steel or? Yes, like- it is a beast. Yeah, I can see why you fell in love. The one, but I. I was um, some oh, of the things yeah. that I put on here was ventilation and the importance of using a mask because I don't want people to get sick. Um, the thing that I heard was the finer the particle, the deeper it goes. So if you're, you should, you definitely should have the, um, the particulate N95 particulate mask on at, at all times. And it's uber important. I mean, I've, I know I even cheat and do things like hold my breath, <laughs> but really it's, it's really stupid. They're so hard to get those now. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they're so good with the breather on the front. Uh, the, I get, I got some of the cartridges and they're not okay. the normal ones from 3M, but I just bought them. I haven't tried them out yet because I need to switch them out, but I got the 3M half mask. Yeah. And then yeah. auto fry has a different type of, cause those are hard to get right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, at uh, the building stores, they seem to, I mean, at least here in Salem, they, they have the those now the the other thing is to have desktop ventilation which is real i I wish it wasn't so pricey but Um, they're 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 awesome and if you can afford one um i would definitely go for it but other than that you you did nancy i followed your tutorial that's how i do mine yeah i have one like that as well the this uh yeah the the inline fan thing works for soldering works great and you taught me something when I was setting mine up. Uh, I just used a fan that pulled out before is I got a piece of paper and I burned it. And when the smoke was billowing or whatever, I made sure it had direct um, suckage. And didn't go in front of your face. Yeah. And that's a way to tell. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we had it just vented out. I don't know if you can see it, but um, no, you can't. It's just vented outside. Yeah, right out the door, right? Well, right out the wall when we built this house because he built the studio for me on our house. Oh, nice. Um, okay. But um, yeah, so I've really, really uh, enjoyed having that ventilation and I have it on a variable switch. Yeah, that that I find is really nice to have. It's, it's the cheapest system I've ever found for fume ventilation, you know, but that's, ideally that would not be a dust collection right. unit. Um, I have a dust. So I've been using bench junkies, um, PRMS system, you know, that sucks down, but yeah. I, you know, but I find, and I even turn it up high that, um, particulates still float around. Yeah. Yeah. I think a mask is imperative with, even with that, unless you, you know, I've seen a couple of systems that are like so good that nothing escapes, but those silicone wheels and oh, the yeah. things are putting off a lot of stuff. Oh, awful crap. Awful. And not to mention all the metal dust, you know, and mm-hmm. it's, uh, and like I said, the smaller, it, the finer it is, the deeper it goes. That stuff is like powder. So, you know, it's compacting in there. Chemicals stuff. Like, God, I was looking at some of the chemicals we used the other day, you know, these awful, awful, awful chemicals. I wouldn't use that inline fan for a chemical hood. You know, mm-hmm. I think if you're going to be using chemicals that are that corrosive, um, you have to do it outside somewhere, you are know, you talking it's, about like pickle and stuff or no, or was no, it, it was it cadmium? it's no, in it's plating cadmium. in gold plating. Mm. 
Oh, oh, oh right. Okay, so I ha I do have a plating system that I got, and that yeah, I can tell. I'm I was so afraid to use that for the first time. I had on the, I bought a, a chemical resistant apron, and I had the ventilator that was for chemicals, and I had gloves just to use a pen plater because I was terrified. Yeah, I'm going to do that route too now. What do you have? What's that? Just look here. Oh yeah, that's an awesome book. Oh, I have it has a lot of ideas for um, different chemicals that we use and how to make it a bit safer. Um, also with ventilation ideas and yeah, so I got a lot of good ideas in it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great book. Um, I was given some samples and I've been using it in the beginner jewelry classes like Chimera of this brand from Rio Grande, it's, which is called Luxie. And it is a polishing that. compound that is silica free. So it's less, mm. yeah, there you go. That's, that's the sample pack. <laughs> vegetable, vegetable based, isn't it? Really? I think so, yeah. And it yeah. works well. And they have ones for your buffing wheel. And then they have ones that are lower speed for your rotary tool. Oh, wow. What's it called? Good. What's it called again? Junkies. Luxi, L U X I. What? Okay. That's yeah, it is. I don't feel stressed like if it. they were polishing at the bench. You know, they, it's, it's less, still not great. It, I mean, but... you wear a mask, but it's not as crazy. Yeah, it says it's made from vegetable fats and alumina abrasives in a water based compound. And they're color coded. And then, little, yeah. Little brick. Well, this is the sample pack. I got that from the bench tool junkies. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Monthly subscription box. That'll probably last you 10 years. It yeah, does. they've got like a whole bunch of different. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I bought... how, do they, how do they differ differentiate from the um, high from the normal set high speed polisher and then the flex shaft? You said that they di differentiate. Yeah, they just have a different uh, bracelet. Formula. Formula. They, there's like a she probably has it's like a big um you open it up and there's like a yeah, big it's part the guide you which one's there like that oh okay oh yeah. and so that's a sample of each one that they have yeah exactly. so all the different yeah. colors i've like, been wanting to try that i just i just haven't i was i was surprised it, it's good mm -hmm. i have like I was too i tried it last weekend and i wasn't so sure i was like well okay i'll give it a shot but it worked really nicely i have so oh, much good. damn left <laughs> what I, I like to use Zam. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've kind of used only Rouge. Yeah. And silicone, but I use the silicone knife edge. I use the Zam on my cabs too, like my turquoise cabs and different stuff too. Oh yeah. I was talking to somebody online. They said they ruined a stone. And uh, I was like, no, you didn't. We can fix that. And I told her about going in like with an abrasive grit on her flex shaft on a like a felt wheel and then moving down to diamond polish uh, because I've done that many times where I've been like doing my bezel setting and the, the thing called it rubs things down. Burnisher. My, my burnisher slipped and cut across the top of an opal, gouging it. And I, you know, after I cried, I got the stuff out and went to work on it and fixed it. Um, I don't know if you guys have done this either, where you, your stone, your bezel's too small and you don't want to redo the whole thing. You grind your stone down to fit. <laughs> No, that's a good the one. Yeah, I, have. <laughs> I haven't done that, but I've definitely done the burnisher thing about 5,000 times. Oh yeah. It's so easy. But you know, since yeah. I discovered these, oh my God, the best tool ever. I, I love this thing. The um, bezel punch. You've seen these? Yeah. So I have a set of those. You ever use them? No. They're really. Sick. It's hard if you have oval, though. Well, no, I know mine are mostly oval. They don't work for oval; they're for round. But I know that's why I never use it. Oh my god! You just like put it on and go like this, and it's done. <laughs> I got it to do like you know when you make uh bezels out of um rods and stuff, but yeah. I just... Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> some of the yeah, most of these are like tube size, but like for tube yeah. set stuff, and mm -hmm. I think I thought it was such a clever idea. I was loving. Andrea, do you find that you have a hard time setting uh, the gold bezels? I think gold is so hard sometimes to push over. It drives me crazy. Oh, yeah. So
not, it's really hard. I ended up, uh, I ended up learning how to like hand hammer the vessel uh-huh. down. Cause it's just too hard to like, I can't get enough leverage to get that stuff over, even if it's like 26 gauge. Do you, do you uh, bezel. file a bevel on the edge of your bezel? No, not really. Kind of thin. Uh-uh. No, I'll just, yeah. I'll hammer it down and then go over it with um, a silicone wheel uh-huh. to kind of uh-huh. smooth it out, get those hammer marks out. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I'll, I'll zap it with some Zam. Zap a Zam. Uh, are you um, ingoting your gold to go like do eight nothing lower than 18 gauge back when i learned because you said that was a nightmare so i was just curious because i've just done um the i've only done 18 gauge because you know this this is like a lot softer i haven't just risked it whatever and but it's still hard to do on your gold are you um using fresh gold or are you um melting and reusing just fresh just fresh i do a little bit of both if i for back plates i'll remelt and that's a and that's been okay but not the bezel so yeah i've got bezel um but and i've got scrap gold but i just um yeah that's what i was thinking about is melting it for the back plate i do simple i'll just i'll blob it up and then and then just pound it out you know on my on my steel block for 14 to whatever gauge i want Mostly Uh-oh. use 14. <laughs> Mostly use 14 carats. He wants me to get an electric hydraulic press now. It's That's good what I have. I have a, you have one? Lucky you. Yeah, I just upgraded it. I think I was too mad at him and he's like, what can I buy you to make your life better? I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got it for our anniversary. We've been married for like 23 years. I don't know. Yeah, it's a long time, huh? That must be really nice because cranking that press, especially when oh, you're it was, to form. It was killing me. And now I'm like, I would probably use an electric rolling mill more than the press though. I saw you had a hydraulic press. Have, that's my favorite tool. Yeah. Who, who made that yeah. one? You know, it's bull, um, Dakota dog. Um, it was a gal that she wrote a book and then she suggested this company, whatever it's kind of fashion, like a, you know, it's a cheap, a cheaper version of the Bonnie Dune. It's, it's made like it uh-huh. and, and all the yeah. pieces work with it, but it's not. And it's a D- Dakota bulldog. Bulldog. And I think they stopped making them, but it's, I love it. I I love love, it. Yeah, it is my, I put some rhinestones on that puppy. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. But So Denise, I want to hear a little bit about, I want to hear a little bit about you, each one of you before we sign off. So how long you've been doing this and what do you kind of stuff do you do? And- I've been enameling for, I don't know, probably six years and um, just recently started making settings for them just very recently. Nice. Um, I've watched a lot of your videos and just kind of had Thank to you. step into it. You know, I, I watched so many videos, so it's like, okay, just do it. So yeah. I have my you. little, I'm a little torch area, I saw you. but um so, so yes. Yeah, so, cool. so can okay. we and we can see your work on that thing you link you get the yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Great. I do like um oh and you have a ventilation system back there, right? Is that I saw it? Yeah. 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 My, what, are you, um, what are you using? Who is oh, yeah, what's the Heiko or whatever? Oh, you got the Heiko? Yeah. What, what I, is, I just got that for Valentine's Day. <laughs> you nice. you guys are doing something right. I husband doesn't buy me nothing. I know. <laughs> He did um, buy me but, a what's that thing called a microscope oh well that's good i oh, i have the it. um smith little torch and i i, I want to get a bigger torch and i just don't know yet what i what i want but i was listening to you guys so uh-huh. some ide- ideas yeah um okay so now we need jenny what, what do you how long you been doing it what kind of stuff do you do well um I don't think I've been doing it that long. So 2014. Um, it's longer I'm, than you think. That's seven years. <laughs> well, I'm a third third generation. Oh, so, you are. 
yeah, um, my grandparents, um, yeah, up in Alaska where I was born, they had a shop in Seward and um, they did bench work for K's or Zales. I don't oh, know, they were oh. a casting house and they also did um, their own stuff and they did stained glass. And so when they decided to stop doing that after the earthquakes and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, moved down to Washington state um, and we started a cattle ranch. I was with them a lot. Uh, they had all of their setup and I would spend hours watching my grandma make. So yeah, I'm just internet taught and mm -hmm. from them. <laughs> yeah. Andrea, what's your story? Well, I started teaching myself um, like wire work when I was in, in college around 2001. Uh -huh. Just kind of been self teaching myself over the last, I don't know, almost 20 years. And um, recently have started delving into gold um, because I love gold so much. So it's very yeah. selfishly motivated, but <laughs> I expand more into gold in my work. <laughs> you need to, you need to do what turns you on, right? You know, if you get excited, That's right. about it. I love gold too. I'm, I'm a 22 carat, 24 carat gold person, but mm -hmm. me too. Buying that I love high, every high time gold. you go to Rio and you put it in your cart <laughs> and you're like, oh man, $3,500. <laughs> I think you like lose five years of your life looking at it. <laughs> exactly. start, start clutching my pearls. <laughs> I, I ended up, I, I was like, okay, I'm buying a sheet, buying some gold. And I get on there and I look at the price and I keep changing the, <laughs> now it's 14K, you know? And, and then pretty soon I, I ended up buying bimetal. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I like to mix silver and gold a lot. And then you oxidize the gold and I like that black and gold. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm doing a lot of that for, uh, for to be frugal. Yeah. And either, and I've got a bucket from the PRMS guy, the blue bucket, uh -huh. so the good one that does the assay, 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 assay. Ooh. Wait, what? Who is it? Say that again in English slowly. <laughs> the, okay, it's an assayer. Um, yeah. Um, What's his name? Pierre Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> I'm always used to it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's uh, precious oh, okay. metal refining service. Yes. Precious. All you have to do, and see, he um, he sends he sends you um, like this is gold I have in here a butt ton of silver I mean it's like super heavy and it's only like this full I think how do you, you get it to them you mail they, it they give you they give you a thing it, it ships back to them you're supposed to save the box but yeah my cats destroyed that so oh um I'll have to get another <laughs> box but um yeah and they, they do you they you they pay for that to be sent it's just, you have to have a certain amount. And I think I'm over that, but their video on YouTube is amazing. And I, I can't remember if they do 95%. Yeah. It's really high because they do a true assay. Okay. Thank you. That's, That's great news. Uh, you put all of your sweepings, you put, um, you, you wipe out your tumblers, you wipe out the polishing area. It takes everything in here. Really? You don't have to sort them. Everything. <laughs> I think it's time for the couch. Are you? Yeah. It's time for a margarita. Yeah, I was going to say vodka. I'm a grandma <laughs> yay girl myself. Thank like, you. Girl. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Thank we you. had a really good time. Bye. Appreciate Great. all your input and your ideas. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.